ਕੋਨੇ ਵੈਪਨ ਖਾਣਾ ਇਸ ਫੋਰ ਖਾਣਾ ਆਹਾਨਾ ਐਕਸੈਸ ਨੀਟੀ ਫਾਰਮਰ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਮੈਂਟ ਐਸਏਪੀ ਫਿਊਰੀ ਲਾਂਚ ਪੈਡ ਵੈਬ ਆਈਡੀ ਫੁੱਲ ਸਟੈਕ ਐਸਏਪੀ ਕਲਾਊਡ ਪਲੈਟਫਾਰਮ ਇਸ ਬੀਨ ਅ ਅਮੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਜਰਨੀ ਬਾਈ ਲਰਨਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਟੀਚਿੰਗ ਆਲ ਥੀਸ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਟੈਕਨੋਲੋਜੀਜ਼ ਟੂ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਯੂ ਇਨ ਟੁਡੇਸ ਡੈਮੋ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਕੁਇਕ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਵਾਟ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟਲੀ ਐਸਏਪੀ ਯੂਆਈ 5 ਇਜ਼ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਆਲਸੋ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਥੈਟ ਐਨ ਐਬਪ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਰ ਵੁੱਡ ਨੀਡ to be able to create its first ui5 in fury application we'll also have a brief course synopsis of the current module which is sap ui5 fury training with o data how the course is structured in what are all the four phases the course is divided and then we'll get in into the system and create our first ui5 in fury application the main motto behind this course will be no copy paste majority of the demos or trainings which you might have seen or attended by far on the ui5 in fury you might have seen that most of the trainers they use a methodology to do copy paste of code they will copy the code which is available somewhere in a notepad or ready made available in some presentation they will paste this code into the ide which is nothing but your development in moment and they will show you the output this is the standard methodology which these days trainers are adopting to however this methodology of teaching is not really so effective because when a trainer does a copy paste of code at that point of time the trainer miss out some of the important things to explain you some of the nitties and gritties of the syntax what should be taken care while writing the code what should be avoided the best practices the options which are available with the code all have been missed out that is the reason the clear motto for my training is no copy paste we will not do any copy paste of code we will write every single line of code in the sessions with that let's have a quick look at the course structure the entire course is divided into four phases the very first phase is basic foundation for ui5 many of you are from a web background or you're from bw background or from maybe sap hana background or maybe from bo background crm background you're from webdintro background and you have no clue about javascript don't worry in this course i will cover the necessary fundamentals which are required for you to develop sap ui5 applications so basic foundation includes html5 css javascript and jquery these four topics which are the heart of ui5 are part of this course many of you as an app developer also have the doubt about do we need any prerequisite knowledge like java as part of this course with that i would like to clearly tell you that is there is zero prerequisite to attend my training you don't need any prerequisite everything which is required i will be covering as part of the course then another question which comes usually in our mind that i have spent my years of career in abap language and suddenly do i need to learn java no javascript and java are two completely different programming languages their programming paradigm their purpose their way of programming is different we are going to learn javascript as part of this course which is easy it is a language for browser so we will be discussing that also as part of our course in unit number 7 so don't worry as an app developer you don't have to know all these things as part of my course because i will be including everything in this course just to inform all of you i am also an app developer so if i can learn you can easily learn it the next phase of this course will talk about mvc architecture and how to develop sap ui5 application with ui5 controls 
we look at the model view controller approach which is similar to develop any kind of view application in modern technologies be it in angular js be it using webdin pro or be it with uh, mean stack there are different programming paradigms there are different uh, programming paradigms for coding ui based applications and all of them uses mvc pattern we're going to look at the mvc pattern and how does it relate to our sap ui for different types of views like xml javascript json and html views different types of models like json xml resource and odata model they're all part of this particular unit this particular phase of the course together with that we'll talk about the best practices how to modularize your ui code how to modularize your controller code what is a scaffolding template how to create a usable consumable application which meets up to the company standard some of you are already working on ui5 but finding it so difficult when you look at the project structure when you open the project structure of an existing ui5 application you are finding it that it's very very difficult for you to see which file is doing what and sometimes when you putting the code you are somehow able to manage and put the code but you have always this fear in mind am i using the best practices will somebody point out on my code tomorrow and say your code is waste all this fear is there in your mind is this the best way to do things is this the right way indeed to do things am i going to get review comments bad review comments in my code review all these things we will be including as part of this course together with interview questions all the interview questions which are required to crack an ui5 interview will be covered as part of this course together with the topics so complete package complete end to end package with the latest and best practices as part of this course we will be including into this course so after this you will get that confidence which you would need to be able to work with the ui5 app which looks and matches the standard which are required so my idea is to not teach but also to include the best practices and standards required to create a ui5 application in the next phase we'll talk about sap fury ux development which is sap fury in this we'll talk about sap mobile library and also the most latest concepts like component js router root match handler manifest.json new app.json what should be the ideal project structure how do you should have i18n file the internationalization concept the fragments formatters all these things we will be talking about in the third phase of the course we we'll look at the standard template based applications how to create template based applications as well and then in the last phase which is actually not just the batting but includes the bowling so if you are an all rounder player you are definitely going to be benefited during the days of bidding if you are just a batsman or just a bowler it is difficult to survive these days because a company a project is expecting you to do everything many times a student comes to me and say anubhav they are expecting me to code back end as well they are expecting me to expose my erp data via o data services exactly the course targets not just to make you batsman not just to make you bowler but it will make you an all rounder in this we will talk about o data service development using sap abap during this phase we will see how to create different crude operations implement them service generation technique image processing function import creating associations relationships handling different variety of calls gateway client how to analyze the gateway errors how to use main service transaction to register your own data service how to activate deactivate the sic of nodes for own data service how to test the own data service using gateway client postman plugin in the browser and finally consuming this real time own data service as part of your real time fury application and then finally deploying the end to end application to your sap system locking it into a transport request and delivering it to the quality system
what should be the change management what should be the right practice when you want to make a change so that you will lead to less regression defects when it reaches to the quality system so that's what in a nutshell is starting from foundation till the top floor of the building we will be building end to end just to remember a building can only sustain when it has a strong foundation the overall training will more and more focus on foundation your foundation has to be very strong by looking at every nitty and gritty and that's only possible when you don't copy paste the code i would encourage every student of my course to not copy paste the code rather write every single line of code so you do mistakes do ample amount of mistakes to learn all the mistakes are encouraged as part of this training so that you do mistakes you learn from your mistakes so when you go into the real productive environment that point of time the code quality which you produce is up to highest standards that's about the brief on course in a nutshell and the course synopsis discuss basics of sap ui5 so what is sap ui5 you might have heard about sap sap ui5 sap fury what exactly sap ui5 is all about SAP UI5. SAP UI5 is a framework which uses PBC design pattern to be able to develop The responsive web application now here you see I've highlighted three important words which might be confusing for you what is framework what is MVC and what is responsive three important words from interview point of view as well so what is a framework let's understand what is a framework a framework is a collection of libraries framework is a collection of library each library is a collection of classes each class is a collection of methods attributes functions functions are nothing but your methods methods attributes functions association with other classes events etc that's what exactly a framework a framework offers you to be able to develop something on top of it for example dotnet is a framework it offers you to develop using different variety of languages like Visual Basic, C++, C Sharp. SAP UI5 is also a framework and it offers variety of libraries. For example, SAP.M library. That is a library which SAP UI5 framework is offering us. What is MVC design pattern? MVC stands for, you might have already heard about it, MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller Architecture. MVC Architecture, MVC Model View Controller. Whenever you have a UI application, the best practice in industry is to use MVC pattern. It describes how should your application be developed? How should your application components should interact with each other? So whenever you have a screen, that is screen is considered to be a view. All the processing logic is considered to be controller. And all the data of your application is considered to be model. Model view controller architecture. We'll have a one detailed class, the class number 11 in our course on MVC architecture and see how to create our application with MVC. And the last one comes is the word called responsive. What does responsive means? 
responsive web design web design which adapts itself according to device automatically that's called responsive web design it's a web design which adapts itself automatically as per the device this is a world of mobile and tablets so nobody wants to invest on an application which should be separately developed for mobile separately developed for tablet and separate development investment for desktops people want responsive web applications a same application which runs on mobile same application which can run on desktop and tablet so that way you can save car or save a lot of development effort this gives also a coherent look and feel to the end users of your application that's why people more and more targeting responsive development of web applications so sap ui5 framework when it creates the application the application will be responsive we'll see it in a minute when i create our first application let's have a quick look at the syntax or probably the steps to create our first program our first app it's very easy guys it's nothing complicated it is similarly absolutely same way the way you use any other programming language be it a app be it java be it dot net if you ever worked with any programming language in your life it's exactly the same thing any programming language you work the first step in development is initialization Second step is about creating the user interface. The, sec the third step is writing the processing logic, then displaying the user interface to user. And then behind the scene, your processing or business logic is executed. Working with data, user inputs, along with validations. Finally, you will do clean up code. Clean up code, like destroying the objects which you created, disconnecting it from the database connection which you opened all these things are the steps so these are all the easy six steps for writing any programming code sap ui5 also follows the same but the programming language which we use here is javascript don't worry don't panic javascript is part of our course i will take you towards the journey of basics of javascript as part of this course so you don't have to worry about it so these are all the six steps which we use to write any program any typical program be it in ABAP. so those who are from a BAP background you can understand that initialization could be your data statement where you declare data lv magnet type magnet creating the user interface you create a dialogue program or create a screen so you have something called a screen concept where you can create a selection screen or you create can call a screen that's your screen program user interface sometimes user interface is optional it's not always mandatory so it's your choice but in the mvc based application it is good to have a view which is your user interface then we have processing logic where you write all your processing logic data fetching logic from database or your processing logic where you do manipulation and then you display the interface by call screen to the user in ABAP. In other programming languages, we have different different ways to display the launch or launch of the screen. And then finally, you will work with user input. User gives some input, you validate the input, you process the input, you produce the output, display to the user, and then you finally write clean up code, cleaning up everything when the user closes the application. These are all six easy steps. UI5 is also following the same. There's nothing different, it's just like any other programming language. We'll see these steps. And how to create our app so now the question comes anubo where do i write my code 
So you told me that what is UI5? You told me what are the steps to write a code. But please tell me where do I write my code? There has to be a place. So just like you write your code in ABAP, in SE38 transaction code, in SAP UI5, we are going to use some tools. There are popular tools in the market to be able to develop UI5 app. So what are all the tools used to create or app, UI5 application? There are two popular tools in the market. However, there are more to it, but more most popular tools one is Eclipse and second tool is SAP Web IDE. In this course, I will give you an introduction of Eclipse development environment, but our major focus will be SAP Web IDE to be able to develop UI5 application. This is another big difference you'll find between my training and other trainers. Most of the trainers are using Eclipse, but in industry, Companies are moving to SAP Web IDE. SAP Web IDE, however, available in two more flavors. SAP Web IDE Personal Edition, which is designed for trial users, for local developer. And SAP Web IDE Cloud version, which is more productive with an SAP Cloud Platform subscription. Within the cloud, also you can go with a trial account with SAP Cloud Platform. We'll, we'll discuss all of these things during our sessions. The advantage of using SAP Web ID Cloud version is zero local installation. You can just open your browser and start coding. You don't have to have anything installed in your system. However, SAP Web ID Personal Edition, we need to install. Web ID is part of our system very important SAP Web IDE personal edition. We will discuss how to set up this development environment in our system step by step. Don't worry, I will be covering that as part of this course. I will also take you through the journey of what is the best practice, why people are not using Eclipse anymore. What is the difference between Eclipse and Web IDE based development? How they're different and why should you be also moving to Web IDE? In your company, you may be already using Eclipse, but my encouragement during this course will be to move to SAP Web IDE. Okay, let's move on and see the syntax for creating our first UI control using SAP UI5. What is the syntax to create our first UI control? Our first UI control. The syntax for that is var. Var means I'm creating a variable. Then control name, whatever name you want to write, equals to new keyword. New is a keyword indicating I want to create a new object. Then control name, I would say library name, dot control name. SID and S properties. This is the syntax to create a brand new control for your user interface. This is the syntax, guys. Here, the library name, as I mentioned, SAP UI5 is a collection of libraries. There are a lot of libraries. We're gonna use SAP M library. SAP M is SAP mobile library. We're gonna use that library. How many other libraries are there in the system? All these things we will be discussing a little later. Now, then the comes is SID. SID is a unique ID assigned to your control. Then comes is S properties. When you're creating a control, be it a button or, or a text field or a radio button, a checkbox, a table, a list. You are going to give properties for that control. Example, for a button, we provide label, action, color, style, border, background, so many properties. So where can you find all these properties or I will explain you about UI5 SDK. 
where you can find the details about these properties. There's a lot to come, guys. This is just an introduction and a demo. So then we will see how to create the button control and place it into the body of you what user will see body of the of the page you're going to create a page guys the starting point of your application is actually an html file is an html file and we all know html file includes two major components one is the header of the HTML and one is the body of HTML. Header part of an HTML is the brain of HTML and the body is the content what user will see as part of an HTML. We have a detailed chapter plan for HTML and HTML5 in upcoming days. Just understand an HTML page includes two sections right now. This is your HTML page. If you draw this and this HTML page includes two important section one is the header and one is the body so there are two important sections in an html one is the header section another is the body section that's what an html page includes in the body section however whatever you put user will see user will end user will only see what you put in the body of html okay so your end user will only see what you had put inside the body of HTML. User will not see typically what is kept in the header of HTML. Header is like brain, your pre-processing, your processing will be done in the header. Now within the header, you have to also put a script tag inside which you will be writing your code. All your code which you will be writing will be writing in script tag within the header of HTML. So let us go ahead and create our first HTTP UI5 application with a simple HTML using the syntax which I just mentioned on the top and using the steps which I mentioned on the top. These are all the steps which we will be referring. So now let us go back to our development tool. As I mentioned, we will be using SAP Web ID. Don't worry, where did I got this screen from? How did I install it? All these things are detailed, will be detailed out in the sessions starting. We will have anyway our next session planned tomorrow. From there we will discuss all these things in detail. So let me connect to this web ID. Don't worry about this screen right now. How did I got this screen? How it is running in my local system? What did I do to install this? All these things are part of our course. So don't worry. We will set up these things in our system ourselves. Step by step, no copy paste of code. Line by line, we will be doing this. Okay. So now I'm just starting this up. It will start my SAP Web ID development tool. This is just like launching SAP GUI and going to transaction code SE38 to cre start creating your first web app program. Similarly here, we are going and connecting to our development tool to start creating our first application, first UI5 application. This is what we are doing actually, okay? So now as part of first step guys, we need to do initialization. So here you are using SAP UI5 framework. So you have to call that framework. You have to load that framework. That's your first step, very first step called initialization. So you have to write a piece of code to initialize this UI5 framework as part of your application. That is our step number one. So let us go ahead and create our first HTML page. And I'm going to write a code to initialize the UI5. So what is the code do we write? We call this piece of code called bootstrap. In case of UI5, this initialization is called bootstrapping. The bootstrapping means I want to load SAP UI5 framework because I'm going to use it. So now I will write a piece of code to be able to do bootstrap. We'll understand more detail about the bootstrap in upcoming days. Let us go back. It's still launching my web IDE. It looks like a little slow in my browser. Okay, I think I have to just quickly restart my web IDE. Just give me a second. Just quickly restart my web IDE. Let's go back and restart. Perfect. 
And now just press refresh. It's still starting up. So it's booting up my web IDE, which is my development tool. Voila, you can see this is my development tool, my web IDE. Now, what I'll do is I'll create a simple project so I can right click on the workspace. I just say new. So if you see this view, the screen exactly looks like your SEAT like a screen. In SEAT in SAP above, what you do is on left side you have a panel in this panel you will have your projects you will have your data dictionary objects you will have your match codes your type codes your ddx your programs your classes your function modules your function groups your dialog programs everything you have it at the left side on the right hand area this is your main canvas area where you'll be writing your code other than that you have certain options we will be exploring these options as in when we will progress in our course so now I'm going to create our first folder. Everything starts with a project. So I'm going to create a new folder. And now in this folder, I'm going to create our first project file. So let's create a new folder. I can say demo UI5. Click on OK. You can see it's created. It's an empty one. It doesn't have anything. Let's create a new file inside. So right click, say new file. And I say, maybe my file name is index.html. And as I mentioned, the file includes, any HTML file includes two sections. So it starts with an HTML. It has a header and it has a body. There are two sections into it. And now as part of my initialization, I'm going to invoke and load SAP UI5 framework. So I will say, hey, SAP UI5, can you please come and get loaded when I run this? I can say now script and I can say SRC property where to load the SAP UI5 from. I'm loading SAP UI from, from internet. I will just put HTTP SAP UI5 dot HANA dot on demand dot com slash resources slash SAP UI core.js now what is this, this url how it has come from how do i remember this all that we'll, we'll discuss little in detail in upcoming days and then i have to say sap ui data sap ui tips i'm going to load one of the library sap.m library mobile library to be able to work that's called my bootstrapping code. Hey everybody, this is my initialization. I am loading SAP UI5 framework just to test. Copy this URL, put it into the browser, and check if this is giving something to you or not. I just place it into the browser, another window, to test if it is producing something. Yes, it's producing some code, which is okay. No, so it will work fine. And now data SAP UI leaves to load the library which of my choice. And now I'm going to write next script tag to write down my code. Here is where now I'm going to write my code. So first part is initialization. This is the very first step, initialization. The second part here, however, in script and script tag, we are now going to have here the, the, loading, the, the loading of your application. So now let's use our syntax, which we learned just now. The syntax was creating our first UI control var some control name new library name dot control name so i'm going to say var let's go back just say var to spider-man i'm going to create a button so with the name of the button is going to be spider-man so new sap dot dot button control so this is a standard class which is available in the library if you remember the framework includes libraries. The libraries includes classes. So button is a class. So this whole thing is a framework. Framework has a library. This library has a class called button class. So this is how 
these things are connected with each other. Remember, just now we discussed about framework classes, libraries. So this is button is a class. I'm creating an object of the button class. And now inside this, I can pass the button ID ID. It's the ID of my control pass. You can pass anything of your choice. And then curly braces. And then we'll be writing inside here all the properties we need. Remember, guys, this is a very trivial and basic thing, but it's always important when you're writing the code. Symbols will break you or make you. So let me introduce the first Fundafox of our class. What is Fundafox? Fundafox is my own invented word, which I've invented during the days of my college time. This is something which indicates very important. Whenever you're doing reading, studying, sometimes you find things which are very important, which is the crux of the subject, which is the crux of the topic. You mark it as important. I mark it as Funda Fox. So this is the first Funda Fox. Symbols are very important as part of this course. Each symbol has its own meaning. In programming so it looks very trivial but it's important to know these symbols what is the they named as because many times the technical developer you are expected to be professional you're expected to talk to people in coding language this first symbol is called parenthesis many people write or call it as bracket. No, this is not bracket. If you are talking to your colleague and say bracket daldo, incorrect, it's not bracket. If you're meaning this, write parenthesis or say parenthesis. You are a developer. This one is called curly braces. Okay, this one is called curly braces or braces, just simply braces or curly braces. And this one is called bracket, guys. This gentleman is called bracket. Symbols have a very special meaning while you're writing the code. Each symbol has a different meaning. When we are writing the code, we will make sure that we call these symbols also in the same way. This is our first Fonda Fox. So now you see, guys, we have used parentheses and curly braces. They have a meaning. You can't interchange them. See, here is a curly brace, and this is a parenthesis. And now inside, I'm going to write a property called text property for my button control and I say click me that's what I want to say this is my button object which is created but user cannot see this button object until it is placed into the body because this code is right now in the heading tag in the header only it's not in the body yet so we got to place this button in the body of HTML so in the body I'm going to create a placeholder I'm just creating a placeholder called deal, giving some ID, Anubhav. That's my ID. And now what I'm going to do is I will come here and say my button object of Spider-Man dot place add. Please place my button into my placeholder Anubhav in the body. In Anubhav is the placeholder, is the, is the area on the screen where I'm placing my button object. So as a result of that, the button will be displayed to you on the screen. Yeah, it's so easy. First, load the initialization, your UI5 framework. The second step is create the class, create the object of the control, UI control, which you wish to load. The, sec the third step is to create the placeholder when you want to place your button. And the fourth step is to place and move your object as part of body so user can see that. We are ready. Let's launch up your application for first time. You click on this play button. Congratulations. You have learned creating your first SAP UI5 application. It is launching it up in the web ID, uh, in the browser for you. You will see soon we would, it would load. Now it's loading the UI5 framework from the internet. It's getting all the files and voila, you see the button is now coming up on the screen. Click me. But it, the screen doesn't look like, you know, Fury-like screen. You might have seen some demos or some uh, some uh, some applications also in UI5 Fury. It, it doesn't look like that. 
The reason is the formatting. The reason is theme. It doesn't have the theme right now. So we can also load the theme here. So there is a parameter you got to add in the bootstrap and tell the UI5, hey UI5, can you please also load a theme for me? Data hyphen SAP UI hyphen theme. And just mention SAP underscore Lucas to save this, come back and just refresh your application. So come back and refresh the page. And now it still won't work because the theme is getting loaded, but the theme doesn't know what to do. So you have to add here in the body a class name. Don't confuse this with the object oriented class. It's just SAP UI body. Just mention that and now come back and just start it once again. Come back and refresh. Voila, can you see now the background color of the page is changed to light blue color and sky blue color. And now you see the button also look and feel has been changed. It looks more like a fury, fury like look and feel. That's because we have loaded the theme. And we have also mentioned that to the theme, the theme would need an element with the class name this, which is standard. This is what is looking for. It found this element, it changes the color of the entire page. You will understand the concept of this class in CSS chapter. You will understand the concept of theme also more in detail in CSS unit, unit number six of our course. There is a lot to do, guys. Please understand, I cannot cover everything as part of the demo. There are things which are there from starting basics. Every single line of code we will be writing line by line. Okay, that is what we will be doing, guys. Okay, cool. So this is about creating our first UI5 application and my demo. Before we uh, move on to the question and answers, just wanted to quickly share with all of you the success stories of my previous batch of students. Many of the people who have attended my training, the different trainings they have attended, different uh, courses they have attended. There are a lot of success stories which has been generated. And these success stories, I would love to share with all of you, with my all students. So you can see Wallab. He is, uh, he's one of my students and uh, he has also a success story. So I'm extremely happy to inform you that I got selected for UI5 developer in a contact role in Pfizer. And as I told few weeks earlier, two interviews are scheduled for UI5 role. I am happy to share that I cracked both the interviews successfully and got selected in both of them. One is Pfizer and another is Campal. So, and at Pfizer contact got executed first, so I accepted the offer. Today is my first working day. That's one success story. Likewise, I have lots of different success stories with my student. You can see Rohit. Today I'm writing this email to say thank you for my changing my life. I have opted for UI5 and Fury course four months ago, worked hard and finally landed to a good job post on Fury Consultant. You can see it would never be possible to a person like you, the magical, uh, the mechanical graduate to master the concept of UI5 and Fury without your well-organized training. I'm feeling blessed to have a trainer like you. I would love to stay in touch, perhaps speak to you regarding the steps to take a good career in SAP domain. Thank you so much for amazing, voila. You can see this kind of experiences students has, lots of experiences. You can see you are life changer, it's a vitamin, a student from Pakistan. I heartily thank you for teaching me a map on HANA. I got a good offer, phase two interviews on HANA and cleared all of the interviews. You can see, I passed the certification exam without any dumps or cheating. This is what I expect from all of you. Without any cheating, without any dumps, anybody can clear the, with the dumps. I don't want you to use dumps, guys. I have cleared all, all these certification exams without any dumps. This is the kind of professional, the kind of hard work these people does and they showcase the great results. I'm expecting a similar uh, commitment from all of you. I will, I'm ready to do hard work with you. Are you ready? But remember, if you want to do copy paste of code, don't join my course. I'm not interested in teaching if you are interested in copy paste. If you want to do hard work, everyday practice, the exercises given into the course, please do join my course. If you want to do copy paste, don't waste your money behind any trainer. You can do yourself the copy paste. Internet has thousands and thousands of examples placed on internet. You can copy and paste and produce the outputs. That is not uh, what 
exactly covered in this course. This course more targeted towards writing. You have to do hard work, write every single line of code the way I explain, and then produce the necessary results what you want to do. With that, it's a wrap on today's session, the demo session. Thank you so much. If you want to continue and join this course, please feel free to write an email to me. My email ID is anubhav.abap at gmail.com. You can also write an email to my secretary, install.abap at gmail.com. You can also check out our website. Our website is www.onlinefloritrainings.com. You can also check my YouTube channel with the name Anubha Obiroy. So let me quickly show you the website. So just go back to the website. You can also always write an email for sign up as part of next step. So this is the website. You can go and find out the course which is most suitable, most relevant for you. And then accordingly, you can make a choice. All the course content, the duration of the course, everything is uploaded on the website. You can always go and check out the course content from the website. The topics, the breakup, what is covered, the demo, sample demo videos on each of the course. If you want, if you are already an intermediate uh, level into SAP UI5, you can also jump to the advanced Fury course. Here we are covering SAP Cloud Platform, SAP Web ID Full Stack, which was released recently, and all the features of Web ID Full Stack, like workflow developer, a workflow development in SAP Web ID Full Stack, a multiple workspace concept creating best practice build of SAP UI5 app using Grunt.js, basics of Node.js, OPA5 test, QUnit test with UI5. There's a lot covered in this advanced Fury training. Fury extensibility, how to extend the standard Fury apps, Fury security, roles, configuration, launchpad designer, theme designer, changing login, logout screens, creating extensions, deploying your app and, and creating a custom tile for that. All these things are covered in this advanced Fury course. Once again, a 40 hours of course. Now you have also native HANA development, a web on HANA course. There are a lot of different modules available, technical modules made for developers, made for technical consultants only. I am not giving any functional training at the moment. You can also check the most top uh, courses which are hot in the market. And today, today, if you would like to survive, guys, it's very important. It's very, very important that you at least cover these three modules if you want to survive today. UI5 Fury for Absolute Beginner, ABAP on HANA with new ABAP syntax and new concepts like CDS, EMDP with on top of HANA DB, and then Fury Launchpad and Security. These three courses I am recommending to each one of you. I will showcase you the right learning path. The biggest problem today in your company, people are just talking, talking, talking. Nobody is giving you the right learning map, the right learning path for your career to set up and establish a good foundation for this new technology. People are not giving that direction to you. You are directionless today. It's an unguided missile. I will guide you your missile so you can blast it at the proper place. Very, very important to have a guided path to be able to give a shape to your career with your great learnings. This is what we will be doing as part of this course together. Along with that, also with all the interview questions, we will also be covering as part of this course. Thank you so much for attending this demo session. And I congratulate heartily with all of you for giving your time today for the demo session. See you in the next session. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and goodbye.